The broadcast is now starting. All attendees are in listen-only mode. Hi, everybody. Welcome to today's webinar on how to define the best enterprise strategy roadmap for your organization. Just a couple of housekeeping items. We will be recording today's session, and that will be available to you guys um, via, via our, our website. Um, certainly, we'll, we'll allow some time at, at the end for some, some questions, so we'll, we'll go through the content, and you can uh, ask some questions, and we'll spend some time at the end trying, trying to, to address those. Um, additionally, if uh, you guys are social media savvy, um, Certainly welcome your participation. Our Twitter handle is at Panorama ERP, and if you want to throw up any comments, um, certainly you could use the hashtag IT strategy or ERP roadmap, and uh, it, it'd be good to see that uh, participation. So I appreciate that. So I'm just trying to set this up a little bit more. Um, so the agenda today will I'll, I'll give a brief introduction of Panorama, go through the purpose of the webinar, talk about some trends give an overview of some strategy options we want to uh, walk through and then talk about a roadmap for, for implementation. But, you know, just kind of setting this up, frequently we, we see organizations that um, pull the trigger too quickly, get, get started on uh, various IT initiatives or, or other projects without really considering, you know, a lot of the overall strategies and, and needs of your specific business units. So, you know, there are a lot of solutions out there, a lot of ways to engage on, on projects to handle transformation, a lot of strategies out there. So what we want to do today is spend some time to talk through some of those key considerations to help you navigate some of these key decision points. Okay. So anyway, a uh, little background about Panorama for those of you who aren't familiar with us. Um, so we're, we're a leading independent ERP consulting firm. Um, so what that means is we provide an independent voice um, regarding ERP initiatives and, and vendors out there in, in the industry. A lot of what we do is working with clients on their particular strategies. Um, we have offerings such as uh, enterprise system strategy. So what that means is we, we provide a, a holistic evaluation of your personnel, processes, and, and technology. And, and you know, folks are looking for some kind of transformative type engagement, so we, we help you navigate what that is and what that should mean for you. Frequently, um, companies aren't really clear on, on, on where to start, so we certainly want to come in there and help you figure, figure that out and, and, you know, define the appropriate initiative for you, right? Um, other key areas that uh, key, key service offerings, we provide a full ERP evaluation and selection type engagement, so we define your requirements and what it is you need out of a, uh, a new system, and then we help you make, make that decision and help you negotiate with, with those vendors. We offer full implementation services, uh, so after selection, it's time to implement the new solution or, or solution, so we offer full, full implementation services. Additionally, um, key areas of, of service that we'll certainly talk about in some of our slides today are around organization change management and business process management. We've got some key offerings, key tool sets, um, a lot of expertise around those, those elements. We also have an expert witness um, group, so that's, that's when things go bad. We're, we are called in sometimes to provide expert testimony, either on the, the plaintiff or, or defendant side, to uncover, provide our view of what went, went wrong in that, in that particular uh, instance. And then we also offer just you know, some independent verification and validation. So there may be a project that's, that's in flight, an implementation that's, that's already started, so we, we can come in and provide some independent validation of, of what you're doing. And then if course correction is needed, we would certainly offer those, those recommendations around that. And then we just offer general project management oversight um, uh, for, for implementations. Some of our specialties, so company started over 10 years ago, and we certainly focused on some of the manufacturing and distribution type operations. We've grown that to additional industry verticals, um, service companies, certainly in the government industry, oil and gas, energy, disaster recovery, and you can read the list there, waste management and, and healthcare. And, and that's you know, continuing to grow. So we 
we find our, our services translate very well across multiple multiple verticals. A little bit about our, our team. We've got uh, consultants in various offices across the globe. Our main office is, is here in Denver. And we, you know, we, we typically look to hire folks that have operational uh, business expertise more often than, you know, pure, pure technical focus. So that, that brings a lot of good, good value, good expertise to our clients when we're looking at business process reengineering and looking at some of the change management aspects that are really important to you guys. And a lot of our consultants have um, certifications, certainly have lots of MBAs working for us, but you know, the, the, the Six Sigma business process type, ProSci certified for change management, and then we have our own actually um, 360 ERP certified program that all of our, just real quickly, we, we do have broad and, and deep ERP experience. So we've, we've worked with, with clients to recommend and, and implement a, a variety of, of packages, uh, not only tier ones, but tier twos and tier, tier threes. And you know, this says 150. It's probably closer to 200 with with some of the point solutions that, that focus on, focus on finite functional areas. So the point is, you know, we, we are technology agnostic. We we know the market, and you know, we know what solutions work best for our clients based on the requirements that that we help you pull together during a selection process. All right. So let's uh, let let's get started here. So the the purpose of this webinar is to understand the current trends in the ERP industry, um, to help identify some strategic options that, that we want to consider. You know, there, there aren't really canned best practices out there, but we're going to provide a, a framework to help you identify the best options to meet what it is your organization is trying to do. And then, you know, we'll, we'll, we'll talk through pros and cons of various strategic alternatives to help you with your decision making. And then we'll talk about you know, we'll we'll give you some general direction on how to translate uh, translate these decisions into uh, a good solid implementation roadmap for your organization. All right, let's talk about a, a few trends in the ERP market. So, I'm, I'm going to show you a few slides that are actually findings um, out of our annual ERP report. So, it's something we've been doing in the last several years, and it's uh, re really really eye-opening information. So the, the, this first slide really is, is to underscore that, uh, sure, ERP implementations are challenging. Yeah, it's, it's, it's by no means a, a slam dunk. And you know what, what this shows is that 50, 57% of the respondents to our survey had cost overruns, similarly showed duration overruns. And then you know, almost 50, almost 50%, 50 about 46%, uh, came back indicating that they received 50% or less of, of the benefits that they had, had expected. So, you know, that, again, this, this is kind of underscoring the need to be prepared, have that good strategic vision going into this, and, you know, ha have that in place before you get too far down the, uh, down the path of some implementation, some transformation project that, that you have in mind. And, you know, I, I mentioned on an earlier slide we offer independent verification and validation service and we've certainly gone in to uh, some folks that were again in, in flight in flight on an implementation on an engagement and we we've, we've recommended that they call a big time out and you know do a do a strategic assessment you know go 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 through a deep dive on some of these areas we're going to talk about today before proceeding any further and again just to uh, further underscore some things here so you know, satisfaction levels are, are, are mixed here. Um, you know, 42% responded to our survey that they were satisfied with their with their um, implementation. I think one of the big points here is there are a lot of systems out there, a lot of sophisticated solutions out there that, that address all kinds of needs for all kinds of industries for all sizes of companies. So, again, this underscores the need to uh, upfront Right up front, do that, do that deep dive decision making and strategizing that, that you need to do to define that path and then help find the right solution to get you where you need to be on your transformation project. Again, similar story here. Uh, the respondents to the question about implementation costs: Were you on budget, under, or, or over? And, Clearly, this shows that about 
43 percent were, were on or under, and then you know the other 57 percent were over budget to, to varying degrees. So again, you know a lot of very there's there's a lot of variation in companies' abilities to stay you know on on budget. Again, this underscores look we need to have that proper planning and the, the strategies in place to define what what your initiative needs to be and should be for you, and setting the proper expectations and, and, and goals to keep that engagement on, on track. Very important to do. Similar story about project duration, not surprising based on the uh, results we were just looking at. So there's you know 40, only 43 percent showed on schedule or under schedule for their anticipated project duration. Um, you know, we've clearly seen that more companies are running, running over on time and, and, and budget. So again, I, I think a lot of a lot of organizations underestimate the effort and time to manage the key business processes and change management activities that, that you need need to focus on for you to be successful in, in your implementation. Again, um, similar story about percent of benefits realized. Um, you know, only only 35 percent saw 51 percent or more of, of, of benefits realized that they had, you know, put down on paper perhaps going into this implementation. Um, so, you know, they're not getting the benefits that they thought they would. Um, you know, again, this underscores the need for focusing on those business process tasks, identifying change management strategy as, as you roll out a solution. And you know, if you do that, that, that's going to swing that pendulum toward hitting hitting all the benefits that you had intended going into your initiative. And again, part of that equation is, is really once you do that deep dive, understand where you are today, current state, where you need to be future state, not only with your processes, but with your people and, and, and your technology. If you have those things clearly identified, then you can set set those realistic expectations about Here's what we expect to get out of this system. All right. Um, so now we're, we're going to take a few minutes and um, review some of the key concepts that, that you need to consider up front. Talk about various strategies that, that you need need to consider when you're looking at um, a, a strategic initiative for your organization. So one of the one of the things. Um, you know, you want to take the time to take a good hard look at what you currently have in place, right? What systems do you currently have in place? Get a, a, a thorough understanding of what those systems are, what their intended purpose was, what the costs are to maintain. You know, do you have existing pain points around that? Um, and you know, what what are the benefits that you're getting out of your current systems, your your current ERP and and other ancillary systems. Are you leaving certain capabilities and potential benefits on the table? If you are, is that something we need to focus on? Is that all that you need to do? Uh, look at additional configurations or different uh, ways to use your, your systems to maximize what you're getting out of them. And that and that'll help help frame the path forward. You know, perhaps perhaps the answer is okay, we really do need to look at replacing our, our current systems, lay down some legacy systems and Look for a more uh, complete solution or solutions, right? Going forward to handle some of these these pain points and address some of our scalability, flexibility needs, and uh, you know even address some of the maintenance costs that, that might have gotten too too high for you. Another uh, way to frame up some of the things you need to take a look at. So you know what what are the options out there for us? All right, we've we've taken a look at um, our, our, our pain points, and we've, we've decided that okay, we we need we need a new system or system. So how do we how do we help frame up some of those decisions? So what what this graphic here is really trying to emphasize is that you need to kind of figure out where you are from a uh, organizational complexity and, and, and size perspective, and then from a you know IT support control. So the the x-axis or the horizontal is is referencing uh, org complexity. So if you're on the right side of that scale, then you're, uh, you know, more complex, larger organization. You know, perhaps you have global locations. If you're on the 
left side of that spectrum, lower end of that spectrum, then you know, perhaps you're a smaller organization, maybe you're not multi-location, not global. Uh, so the point here is, you know, depending on where you are on that spectrum, then you can start looking at uh, either hosted solutions, you know, would a SaaS model work, should it be a tier one on-prem, or can you consider some best of breed solutions or some of the other tier two or tier three solutions. So if you're, you know, uh, the, the vertical axis is talking about the, the need for IT control, perhaps that's, um, you know, a, a competitive advantage for you, or perhaps that, that's not, not a competitive advantage for you, and IT is just a commodity, a service, so you're on the lower end of that spectrum. So if, you're, if you have high need for IT control and you're a highly complex organization, then you're in that upper right quadrant. So tier one solutions on-prem are probably where you're going to land. Um, but if you're, you know, if you need less IT control, and you're a, a large organization, have some complexity, then perhaps a tier one hosted solution might work for you. But again, you can look at those quadrants. So you know, depending on where you fall, it might steer us toward uh, the, the, those types of solutions. You know, perhaps SaaS is a, is a good good path for you if you're a, a smaller organization and you don't need a complex IT support structure in-house. In All right, let's, let's talk about IT strategy and benefits realization. So, you know, the point, point of this slide is be realistic about what you're uh, putting, putting forth here. So be, re be realistic about your overall ERP strategy and your plan. So you want to have that good, solid understanding of, of, of your direction that you're taking. So, you know, you want a, a overall program management plan that lays out the tasks you need to handle and, you know, what the vendor's responsibilities might be or, or other, other third parties. So, you know, there, there, there are a lot of good solutions out there, but, um, you know, companies, organizations struggle to implement those successfully due to either there's, there's an incorrect expectation or there's missing focus uh, on, on the tasks that need to be addressed or there's an unrealistic implementation plan out there. And a lot of that is, you know, defining that, that plan up front to address those key areas. A lot of what we've, we've seen companies sometimes just take what software vendors put out there as, you know, boilerplate implementation plan and frequently that, that misses, misses the mark on, on what really needs to, needs to be addressed, certainly around some of the business process reengineering and the change management aspects of, of any, any implementation. And then you want to benchmark against other organizations. So, you know, what if, what if other organizations in your industry, what have other organizations seen and, and you know, felt when they were implementing new ERP systems or undergoing some transformation? So, you know, and again, we have that ERP report, which you guys can have access to via our, our website. And that, that gives a lot of intel to help you, help you with some of these decisions. So, you know, an example would be, um, I believe our latest report showed that an average duration um, of an ERP implementation had jumped to 21 months, and that's again based on the um, respondents in our in our annual report. So, if if a vendor comes in and says, "Oh, hey, this is going to be a slam dunk; it's going to take us you know nine to ten months," then you probably want to take a step back and really dissect that plan a little more deeply to make sure it's really covering what what it is you need to do and is aligned with what your strategy is for, for rolling out your, your initiative. And then, you know, th this is, I think, obvious. Um, execution is harder than most would like to admit. Um, you know, it really comes down to addressing your business process and, and change management issues. So if we have that, um, if we have that implementation plan properly laid out, proper resources, Identified, then the chances are more likely that we will we will get those benefits realized that, that we had anticipated. We're going to be closer to on budget, certainly closer on time. The more we address those those needs. All right, let's let's talk through a, a few key strategies that we want you to consider before you start your your ERP journey. So, you know, this, these. These concepts where we're trying to plant some seeds here, some things you need to think about, um, areas for you to consider as, as you develop your, your initial roadmap. All 
So integration strategy. Um, so really what we're talking about here is, um, you know, should you have, should you look at a fully integrated single system or should you look at a best of breed solution? You know, we, I had that quadrant a few minutes ago um, regarding organizational complexity and level of IT control. So, you know, based on that, you can try to figure out where on that quadrant you fall and then you need to start looking at, you know, do we want fully integrated system or, or best of breed and what are the pros and cons of those? And, and let, me, let me step back for just a second. So the next several slides, we're going to show uh, various strategies that, that we want to think about. And, and it's really a, a, a spectrum, right? So it's going to be pros and cons. It's going to be kind of a spectrum of decision making that you want to, want to, want to make. Uh, most companies will fall somewhere you know, in between each, each extreme. So this, again, this is just to help you start thinking about some of these key areas. So a fully integrated system, uh, clearly yeah, lower technical complexity. Uh, you know, we're not having to deal with multiple solutions. Tighter integration. We don't have to create uh, various interfaces among systems to get information traded back and forth or to do reporting. So hopefully a, a, a pro of a fully integrated system would you, you'd be able to scale those costs over more users. Now, a, a con, and this is clearly clearly true, there, there, there's no single system that can handle everything that you want. There's always going to be something. Um, a lot of good systems out there, and you know, the, the, the solutions can certainly hit the 70 to 80 percent 80 80 mark of, of what you want to do, but there's you know, usually something else you need to do, customization, or perhaps another solution to fill in, fill in some gaps. So that's certainly something to think about there. Um, and, you know, more organizational change is, is, is needed, right? So in other words, if you're, if you've got multiple locations, uh, multiple business units, uh, lots of users, if you're forcing a single system on them, there certainly is going to be a lot of uh, change management needed there. Best of breed, uh, certainly the, you know, if you want to look, if you want to look at that end of the spectrum, uh, some of the pros are focusing on those localized individual functions that uh, uh, you know, people are used to, to handling. Fewer organizational change management needed. So in other words, we're, we're implementing solutions that handle specific needs, so there's probably less organizational change needed. So we took time, gathered requirements, and decided that multiple solutions were the, were the best way to go. Now, downside though, I uh, spoke a minute ago about technical integration complexity, so sure. It, We've got multiple systems. We have we may have multiple sources of truth even, and we need we need to build some integration between systems to perhaps consolidate information. Perhaps it's a it's a reporting need. There could be data issues between systems, and certainly you're scaling the costs over fewer users. So those, those are certainly things to think about when you're looking at you know what what is our strategy here. So global and shared services. Um, so really, it's you know, do we want to have one standardized operating model, or can we live with a decentralized view of, of, of how the software is going to be implemented and, and, and supported going forward? So, you know, it, it's if if you're a multi uh, multinational, multi-site type organization, how do we design and implement across the different business units or locations? You know, what's what, what's the best way to do that? So th this is certainly a very very important exercise to go through before you get too far down, down the path. So clearly a global design, one of the key considerations, uh, certainly a pro is that those operating costs would, would be lower over the long term. Um, it certainly would uh, support a shared services strategy. So we, we don't have disparate independent support teams. We have one support organization going forward. Now it certainly would have to spend more time up front um, you know, managing some of the uh, change out there. Uh, obviously, the, the con would be there's would be some local resistance to that change. You know, you're hey, I used to be able to do this independently, and now you're forcing this new system on me. Additional controls, things like that. So there certainly would be local resistance and some change management needed there. Uh, frequently, sure, there's going to be longer design time because you're taking again. Local um, local requirements and forcing a global design on there. So there's 
you know, it certainly would be essential to have core team members involved that can understand the local needs and then translate those into what that global design needs to be. Um, local design, though, if, if, you are, if you are on that end of the spectrum, certainly one of the pros, it would certainly be easier to get, get that local buy-in, uh, likely to certainly focus on and, and handle the local specific requirements and would likely be a shorter design time, right? So that's, that's certainly one, one thing to consider. Obviously, a con would be more than likely higher IT and, and support costs going forward. Probably going to have some customization there. Uh, could introduce some risk, risk there. So if, if your company, though, has a shared services view of how systems should be supported, then you know, certainly local design it runs counter to that. Certainly not, not conducive to that model. ERP development strategy. So, you know, what we're talking about here is to customize or not to customize. So, again, two ends of the spectrum. Do we want no customizations for the solution or solutions that, that we select, or do we want or need some customization? So, again, you know, looking at, looking at these spectrums, it, I think the questions are, you know, where, where do you fall? What, what is really needed? But, but the, uh, Considerations are certainly no, no customization. Obviously, you'd have a lower initial cost, probably implement faster, lower te technical um, complexity, and lower uh, ongoing maintenance costs and costs to, to upgrade. So frequently when you have a lot of customization, that certainly introduces complexity um, in, in the future when you are, are upgrading. The cons around zero customization, so there's you know more pressure on you to ensure that the software is, is a functional fit. Uh, so there may be some organizational resistance. Uh, folks are no longer no longer able to do some of the things they were doing or they have to do some kind of manual workaround. Um, but you know, since the zero customization was forced on them, that's that's what they have to do. Right? So you know really the to underscore that point, that software is really driving the business and that, that can certainly undermine some of those competitive advantages that, that you would have in, in your industry. So, and just to kind of un underscore this, uh, honestly, in, in our ERP report, we, we found that only 10% of companies had no customization whatsoever. So that, you know, I think the takeaway is that you, you, you should expect some customization um, in, in your implementation. Okay. So uh, to kind of sum this up, I think um, you know you want to you know there's 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 temptation to customize, but but you need to keep keep all these pros and cons in mind and kind of figure out that that right balance for your organization. You know where where do you really fit on this spectrum? And again, I, I would just underscore based on what we know and see out there in the industry, you should expect some level of customization. It's, it's probably healthy if you fall into that some category, right? And just, just real quickly, I'll, I'll I'll point out that. You know, some of the downsides of customization that uh, certainly increases those ongoing maintenance costs, and I mentioned the upgrade. And it, it really, honestly, if you over-customize, you're really defeating the purpose of an ERP system, right? So the company spent a lot of time developing some really good solutions that fit a lot of business needs. But if you over-customize just, just, you know, for the sake of making things way, the way they were before, then you've really defeated the purpose of getting a new system. So again, What's the right balance between uh, no customization and, and some customization? And then really just instant strategy. So really all, all this is saying is, look, how, how do we align, um, align our technical infrastructure with our global design strategy? So yeah, this, this should be part of the conversation when you're talking about the shared services and, and, and support strategy going forward. So, Obviously, if there's one single production instance, then there's you know one source of truth here, one one common business design. Um, certainly, leverage your IT resources more more favorably. Um, some of the cons, though, there might be some integration needed. It could be higher difficulty in, in implementing. If you have multiple production instances, certainly going to look at needing um, needing to integrate more. Um, you know, there could be multiple databases, could be 
complexities there. So again, it, it's it's aligning your instant strategy with with, with your business needs and your um, you know global support services strategy. Now, overall implementation strategy. Um, you know, we've we've certainly seen some companies move toward trying to do some some measure of a agile methodology to try to get some quick wins and some uh, what should be converted, if, if anything. You know, are, are we going to start fresh so no data converted? Certainly could speed up your your implementation. Uh, less data cleansing needed. Or are we are we on the other end of the spectrum where we need multiple years of data maintained in our new system? Could be a you know could be a compliance issue, um, things like that, or, or, or just simply easier for employees to do research on a past customer, you know, history over multiple years so that the past customer. Uh, so it's it's you know where do you fall in fall in this spectrum? Um, you know, certainly, if you uh, don't convert any data, you might run into some issues with some of your compliance. It could result in some inefficiencies in, in trying to look at some prior periods and, and compare that to some of your current operations. Um, so, uh, but, but you know, again, you've got to figure out where you fall on the spectrum. But certainly one, one key thing, uh, if, if you are doing some, some measured data conversion, is you, you want to look at cleansing your data before you, uh, you know, start that conversion process. In other words, Take that time pre-implementation to look at your current data. You know, it could, could be your customer master records. Maybe there are duplicates in there. Maybe there are inactive customers, inactive you know, vendors uh, that you need to get rid of, duplicates. So you want to take the time to uh, analyze and assess what that cleansing effort looks like. That, that certainly should be done before you define and start running with any any data conversion uh, effort. Deployment strategy. This is this is a really big topic here. Um, so two sides of the spectrum. Look, do we do a do we do a big bang, you know, all in implementation, or do we do some kind of phased approach, which certainly could be by a specific location, or maybe it's by business unit across all locations, or perhaps it's by function. So certainly different ways to slice and dice rolling out uh, a new system or, or system. So the pros of a, of a big bang, it's you know less interim work that has to be done to you know, integrate with your current systems. And there's probably less likelihood of change fatigue and you know that that, that certainly uh, is, is something something to consider. You know what what's the appetite for doing a you know, phase rollout that's that's going to take you know a lot longer time versus versus a big bang. So you know weighing weighing the risks uh, each each way. The cons, okay, you know it, it it really could be a higher risk. Could be some constraints on your on your resources. Um, you know if you haven't thoroughly tested thoroughly rolled out change management processes. There certainly could be some, uh, you know, business disruption early on in your uh, deployment. So you need to, you know, do the best you can. If, you, if you're going with the all-in Big Bang approach, you, you must do the best you can to manage those change management aspects. Make sure you've thoroughly tested and vetted all the processes, procedures, and, and functionality before you go live. Phased approach, you know, certainly could be a, a lower risk. So you're, you know, slowly burning in the functionality by specific location or again by by a business unit. Uh, that, that could certainly bear fruit when you're implementing in, you know, later locations or, or, or business units. There may be some lessons learned out of that out of that first deployment. Um, so, uh, you know, certainly something something to consider. You know, certainly could be um, a combination of, of approaches. This year, um, again, all in at a particular location is certainly a way we've seen people go. Right. Resource strategy. Um, so I think the discussion point here really is: look, it, you certainly need to have 
your internal resources clearly identified, uh, clearly bought in, um, have, have, make sure they have clear ownership of, of what it is we're doing, and kind of find the right balance between internal and then external outsourced um, resources. So, you know, if you go all in-house, it certainly would be a lower initial cost. And, you know, if, if you've got resources that have sufficient bandwidth, it certainly can be done. Um, a con, though, sometimes it's, it's really not the best use of some of these um, key folks in, in your organization. So, you know, there could be some risk there. Pulling people out of the operational, you know, day-to-day -day operational aspects could be some risk there. If, if you do, so again, trying to find the right balance for, for your, your, your team here. Uh, some of the pros for looking at the outsourced end of that spectrum, it certainly would free up your client resources to focus on their key operational areas, right? And then, you know, outside resources can certainly bring those best practices and lessons learned from other, other implementations and help mitigate risks and help, help keep the uh, project on, on task and on budget. You know, probably one of the biggest cons, though, if you have, have too much of a reliance on consultants, outsourcing, you know, outsourced resources, then you become overly reliant on them. And really the biggest problem with that is, you know, going forward, how do we support the system? How do we make decisions about new configuration? How do we, you know, uh, train new, new people? So if you overly rely on outsourced teams, then you sometimes lose that ongoing uh, center of excellence type type approach. Cutover strategy, um, another key decision to think about when we're looking at how to deploy this thing. So do we do we have a hard cutover, or is it more of a, a soft cutover? So again, it's kind of a spectrum here. And, and, and honestly, I, I think fewer, fewer folks are doing a, a, a pure parallel th these days. There's um, a, a hard cutover in essence, but there's a lot of time spent up front going through the different uh, testing cycles and doing what, you know, I've, I've called it kind of a prior period parallel where you're, you're looking at a, a prior business month's um, results and executing those and making sure that you understand how the new system is handling those, those transactions and you know, identifying any, any discrepancies there. You know, making sure you reconcile to what the new system is telling you to what came out of your old system for that, that particular business month, for that particular business unit. So you see a lot of that and you know, we certainly part of this is defining a uh, testing and, and training strategy during your during your implementation to make sure that okay if you do if you do a, a hard cut over that we've we've done the best we can to mi minimize those risks um, and uh, you know hit hit the results and hit the benefits that that we intended and again probably one of the biggest cons of, of doing a so-called parallel it's to me it's that it's that first bullet there and that uh, under cons is that ambiguous mandate for change so clearly somebody's you know, having to, to, you know, enter something twice, they're more likely just to revert to their old, old way. So it's, it's kind of like, do I really need to change now? I mean, I've, I still got my old system up, so I'm, I'm just going to go there. So sometimes those, those, those fail for purely for those reasons. And again, support strategy, uh, similar to our implementation resource strategy. So in-house versus outsourced. Um, it, there's could be some balance here, but clearly if you have a pure in-house support strategy, you've got a better understanding of what, what, what's needed by, by each business unit, right? So certainly more conducive to building that ongoing um, ERP center of excellence mo moving forward, you know, new, new trainees, new functionality, things like that. And then additionally, um, the consideration do we do we have a centralized or decentralized support strategy? So a lot of that depends on um, you know, how how that system is, is structured. You know, we talk about uh, database instances and you know how that shared services strategy should should be rolled out. So you know, along those same lines, if, if we have a pure centralized approach, then we certainly have more efficiencies and, and controls 
in, in place. They're standardized, apply globally, certainly would have lower costs and you know, more it, scale those costs across, across the organization. Um, a condo of, of centralized, perhaps there's not enough sensitivity, uh, not enough consideration to what some of the local business units or, or office locations might, might need. And occasionally you run into some language or, or cultural barriers, right? Um, under the decentralized model, we would certainly have that more lo local view in, in place. But, but again, you got to think about, you know, what, what are the costs of having disparate individual support units versus a more centralized global global approach. Um, an effective organizational change management approach. And I uh, hope you guys can join us for that or perhaps a future one. And uh, thank you for attending.